It's a cold Sunday morning and I'm here in Cardiff in South Wales to investigate not a barn find but more of a, um, a collection of vehicles that a guy has amassed and put in a garden. Sadly a lot of these vehicles have, have succumbed to vandalism and today we're going to try and explore them and dig them all out because in there somewhere amongst maybe eight to ten cars is a really early Porsche. I'm Johnny Smith, this isn't really a barn find, this is more cardening but let's see how we get on these barn find episodes are proudly supported by adrian flux welcome to the late break show so rain tell me oh first of all thanks for letting me come along i know uh, gareth who's just out of shot there he's the one that contacted the late break show to say you're a man uh, you're a connoisseur of cars but unfortunately some of the cars have been damaged uh, like these two through vandalism yeah. so what cars have you got in here and how did this come about this stash over the years since 2000 i drive an interesting car someone had offered me an interesting car or i'd find one on my travels all around britain and then either the car broke down or I took it to a garage to have it fixed drove it in here then continued using the next one <laughs> and then uh, then another one would come along and have it serviced and something and another one would come along and then bit by bit, I ended up with all these cars. And all of the cars I drove in here, they were all serviced or MOT before they ended up in here. Crumbs. And I, and I used to, at the top end here, which we might get to today, I was able to drive the 911, 912, yeah. 1965, the Lancia Delta 1.3, and the Mercedes mayoral car in the little compound at the top because I'd laid it all down with hard yeah. bricks and things, surface, but then got a mad spate of vandalism where three cars were sprayed with aerosols. That took us three years to clean them all up. And then, then from there on, we've had um, gates torn down, new gates put up, new gates torn down and burnt. Um, then a double door garage where I'm standing now, which was in a massive steel frame, yeah. 100 year old brick building. They put a lorry up the lane, put a chain through the front of the door, which a number of times they put holes in the door to get in and try and get, get at these cars. First to get the wheels off the Porsche. This is a Porsche 924 Turbo Series 1 yeah. with a brand new engine in it. And then the, um, the old this e is a 318 IS, which is Poor a thing. homologation special, which yeah. is um, with all the, had all the BMW M Sport stuff on it. But it's not an M, yeah. but it's got the 16-valve, two-litre engine, which was the old Formula One engine from the 70s. But the front of the car is good. Okay. So the engine gearbox... The engine's all right. ...and all the suspension is okay. The 924 Turbo is the early version, which obviously, if people know the 924, it's a bit turbo special. They have the 911 front ventilated brakes on them, 911 front rear ventilated brakes, the 911 rear gearbox transaxles totally That's different right. to a 924 yes totally different so although this is burnt it looks as if whoever did this threw something into the middle of the car in the middle of the car and then the middle of the car burnt until the fire department arrived so what we're going to see today is you've got it's not just german cars you're into you've obviously got an interest for german cars yeah and, and some very nice ones but i know there's a couple of japanese cars a couple of there's an attack the italian lancia delta yeah, the ju the jewel in the the jewel in the rough or whatever you want to call it, the diamond in the rough is this early Porsche 912. Yeah, 1965 912 with a an, a new engine in it when I bought it, which I think cost the man in London at a specialist ten thousand pound, and it was a, a stockbroker guy who I bought it off. Yeah, but he, it it got too difficult to drive in in London traffic. This was in about 2005 2004. Okay, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't the sort of car that was comfortable for driving in London traffic. Yeah. And of course, the traffic since then has become horrendously bad. Yeah. But because I used to visit the temple and houses of parliament um, on my other job, I bump into all these different people. And uh, so I ended up um, with the 912. 912 is one of my one of my dream vehicles yeah. and then I'll we talk about that later. It was a car I nearly bought once and yeah. regretted it ever since. That's it. And it's got it, it originally came from <clears throat> uh, Oklahoma. It was owned by a film company, apparently, at one time. Because of all the problems since 2018, particularly, I'm on six types of medication now, 
and um, it's uh, it's time has come that I just want to get rid of them all. So I can use the good bases because they're all initially good cars, but they've had little problems here and there. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go through now into this is like a collapsed roof by the look of it, Rain, and some Mazdas, two, two MX-5s. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about these, and you obviously. Well, like this, this is obviously known as a Miata because it's a, a Unos, and it's a chassis number one nine five, a very early one because it's G Reg. Yes. And I drove this well to North Wales many, many times. Fantastic. All around, the, I drove this Scotland many times, North Wales, all over the country. Fantastic yeah. car, yeah, wonderful car, the Unos, because it's all upgraded as the Japanese sports model. And then I came across what is known as a Mazda MX-5 RS, which is they only made 500, which is like a the equivalent of Ford Sierra Cosworth's RS 500, upgraded on the engine, the 1.8, the flywheel, the gearbox. Limited slip, Bilstein yeah. suspension lowered. It's all Mazda Sport parts, and on the body, and the a real roll cage in it, and real rally seats in it. Wow! So how long have you had these? Um, this from about two thousand and five, and this about two thousand and six, seven. You know. Okay. And this is collapsed, hasn't it? That's it. Then this so one, this is... one time was a fully high roof. So you've got it's landed on on, on the, the MX five, broken the windshield. And it's that landed on the back of the Mercedes 190E. Yeah. And the, and I don't know if the window's broken or not. Yeah, it ended up breaking the back window. Yeah. So you, and I've only realised that in that hedge there is actually a BMW. That's a BMW 325 turbo diesel. <laughs> right. Um, uh, black leather inside. Uh, a lot of M Sport parts on it. Yeah. Um, drove that all around the country as well. Do about. Between 55 and 65 to the gallon. Uh, it's got the alloy wheels and new starter put on it. Um, you know, s some of the injector bits on it. Um, it's probably done 150, 200,000 miles, but it's black leather inside, manual, and it's not like the usual reps ones, which are horrible greys or, yeah, or yeah. basic or basic. Awful grey, yeah. But this, this was so, so, so when someone bought it, they spent a lot of money buying all leather seats. Um, alloy wheels, lowered, stiffened, all BMW stuff on it. Yeah. And, and of course, desirable because it's a manual. In that small gap where the collapsed roof is, is our only point of access, I believe, to get into the rest of the plot where the Porsche and the Delta, and what, what else is in there? The other 190? Oh, yeah, it's a 190 diesel, five-speed manual, ex Oriel car from Carmarthen. <laughs> ex, ex mayoral car, <coughs> yeah. brilliant. Um, it's it's s simple, black, black inside, manual, diesel, two and a half litre one. Yeah. On the corner on the right hand side is my left hand drive 1.8 Fiat 124 Spider, which drove for many years, which upgraded it with poly bushes on the suspension, different shock absorbers. I didn't even know there was another, I've just been staring into the yeah. bushes, I didn't know there was another car, I just That's thought there was the BMW. And it came from California, that one. Yeah. And it, it is solid bodily, but being fit, um, I never really liked it because of the quality of all the fittings. Yeah. If, you, if you had a Porsche or a Mercedes and you get a Fiat, There's no comparison. like people who own Ferrari, early Ferraris, they're, they're not all that wonderful. No. <laughs> you know, I've known people with 308s and 328s and things and dodgy electrics and funny things and yeah so, so some of the switch gear isn't good so we need we need to go and get the hedge trimmer yeah and, and hack through there to have a look at the fiat so while gareth's just started um hack, hacking some of the brambles around for the bmw and that fiat 124 just want to have a quick look at the the 318 is motor with rain because this is the the bit that makes this particular car um, really important it's a real shame that it's been uh, vandalized but from here onwards, the fire hasn't got to it, we think. There it is. There we go. <laughs> All original. With a bit of burnt plastic. But, the, but I uh, think as you can see, there's nothing damaged under the hood. I think that's escaped, you know. I think that has escaped. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. how lucky. That is lucky. 
so it's not all a totally lost, which is good, yeah. great. So the, <coughs> so the engine in the box and the back diff and, and all the M suspension is all good, except the inside of the interior with its 318 IS buckety seats there, they're obviously damaged beyond. And yeah. the <coughs> and the the um, the car cover that covered it, which we've just removed off the hood, covered the whole car, but the car um, cover got burnt in, in the process, which was from one end of the car to the other. So yes. That, so that's a lot of damage to the back came from the hood yeah. catching fire, not the car catching fire. The, it, the car cover catching fire, not the car. Here's the VIN look. There you go, look. 318 IS, made in Germ West Germany. Because this is not a barn find, we're not indoors, um, the garage that was there has sadly been fire damaged. We're going to be clearing a lot of undergrowth. I've been pre-warned. There's going to be a lot of greenery. So I don't often bring uh, secateurs, bow saws, spades, hedge trimmers uh, to shoot, but today I believe it's going to be necessary. A lot of thorns. I've got some good gloves. I am a massive fan of electric motors and electric things, but I have to say, I do quite like the smell of two-stroke in the morning. Time to see where these cars actually are. I've obviously got the BFF on. Can't find police. My word. I haven't been through here yet. I haven't faked it. I always wait until we do it on camera. It's going to be a tight fit by the look of it. Back garden, Gareth is on the roof of the 924 Turbo, the, the Mark II. I think I've just found the Lancia Delta. If you can see a tiny bit of red down there, that's the Delta. It's not an Integrale or an HF Turbo, it is just a Delta. It's still a rare car. There's another car over there which I haven't identified yet, but the 912, I believe, the Porsche 912, is somewhere there. So you've got a bit of clearing to do. Just a little bit. Haven't got VO yet though. Can't believe I'm on the bonnet of a 924 Turbo. It's very sad. Ow. of chainsaws, I don't go near them. I only go with hedge trimmers as far as I'll go. Secateurs. I don't need chainsaws. Too flipping dangerous. I don't I don't I don't like them. Bloody thorns everywhere, angry bastard thorns. So Gareth's, um, Gareth's been busy chainsawing, I've been hedge trimming, and we've, we've uncovered three more cars. The Lancia Delta, just here the red one, which I think has had a telegraph pole chucked onto it, so I don't know what the front end's like. There's the other Merc 190E, which I think is the ex mare car. And this, wow, honestly, it's, it's, this, is quite, this is quite touching. I mean, this is the last car you'd expect 
to see in a hedge in Cardiff and it's a Porsche 9, 912 1965 the first year of 912 production and what a beautiful thing I have at this stage I've got no idea what the state of it is it's had one window smashed it's been under a ton of undergrowth for oh, I don't know how long has it been like this 15 years. 15 years so it's bound to have rusted a bit unless by some strange miracle but we're going to try and clear the rest of this around it have a good look at it this is the main car I've come here for and I want to see the Delta we'll see if we can dig out this 924 off camera I actually just fell through the sunroof of the 924 uh, which was painful and hence why I'm so filthy but I can tell I've uncovered the bonnet and the knacker duck, so maybe we'll be able to have a better look at the engine bay of the 924 turbo fascinating right look at that look at that it's, this is one of my dream cars there's a story about the 912 back in the late 90s I nearly persuaded my dad that it would be a great idea for me to sell my my Beetle my first car save up a bit of extra and buy a 912 and we actually went to London and test drove two or three of them from a dealer called Towbridge Porsche and at the time they were only about three and a half four thousand quid for a nice one. Oh my gosh how times have changed we've uncovered most of the 912 and this is this is the main thing that I came here today to um, to dig out and we are really digging it out I think out of all the cars a, it's the most valuable, but B, I kind of think it's got the best chance of maybe, I'm not going to say it will, maybe being able to fire up, we'll see. I want to check it, uncover the engine lid, have a look in the motor. Look, it's got, it's got, it's got weeds growing up through it. I mean, poor thing. So it's got the, uh, well, it's got a combination. It's got some alloys on the back or one alloy on the back and it's got the, you can see here, it's got the original chrome steels because the, the original 912s had the chrome steels and I think in model year 68, the Fouche, the then new Fouche wheel became an option. Now Rain says this has got a couple of options on it. The previous owner in the States did some mods like put a five pod dash in it. It should have a three pod dash as an early car before that became an option on the 912 list. Rain's given me a key, which is a Porsche key. Um, He's not sure if it's for this Porsche. It's on a Porsche key fob. It says Porsche on it. But the, the locks are very, very seized. So I've been kind of trying to work them. And the and I can get inside because the quarter light's been smashed at some point and vandalised. But I don't want to... Everything seems to be quite seized. It's been opened to the elements. Normally there's a mystery surrounding these sort of barn finds or hedge finds. I am the hedge find manager, by the way. I'm Johnny, I'm your official hedge find manager. This is, this is, there's no mystery behind this. It's just Rain kind of gets interested in another car and buys another car. It's kind of it. These little horn grills on the front end, I think they changed them in 67. Um, and they went from being four screws and kind of four brass screws to being two screws and these horn grills are two screws so they're all screw on parts whether or not this car has been I think updated to look newer from a 65 model with a five dial dash maybe these um, I am not a 911 or early 912 specialist I'm just going by what I what I what I know what I do know is the engine, if we can get the engine lid open, if we can get the door open. It's from a 356. Oh, squirrel. And that engine is from a, yeah, a, a 356 Super 90, I think it was called, or an SC. Um, and they, de they detuned it by five horsepower for this car to give it extra torque. I think it was the 616 slash six engine. I don't know. If you happen to know of any Porsches in hedges, that you think oh, I should come and feature or help rescue. Contact us on the Late Break Show. I'll put a contact uh, detail in the description. 
I have actually dug cars out before on this uh, on this channel. Uh, we dug out a, a bubble car uh, out of a hedge. I'll put a link up for that above. Typically, we stop the cameras. Phil had a quick break to change memory cards and stuff, and I kept trying to work this lock, and I've managed to get the 912 open. And I haven't gone in. I thought you'd get the first look. So come on in and have a look inside here, poor thing. Good old WD-40 strikes again. I've been working the, the release for the engine lid, which is in the aperture here. And I think, I think I heard it ping. Also, while well, I've been, I've had a quick route in the boot. I haven't gone into the car too much. Nice little, uh, s slightly swollen from moisture, 911 Haynes manual. Haynes are a friend of mine. So let's see if the boot engine lid lifts. It does. Bloody hell. My word, it's moist in there. I'm going to just lift this, lift this sheet off it. There we have the little Bosch distributor. The pair of, well, what, what would have been originally Solexes. They might still be Solexes, I'll have to have a closer look. Obviously the linkage and everything like that will be very seized, but uh, there it is. So this was the recipe for the 912. When the 356, beautiful car that it was, got discontinued in, um, in, the, in the early 60s, this was its replacement. Used the same body to save money as the 911, but put the 356 engine in it um, and make it, se obviously sell it for a lot less money than the 911. I think this outsold the 911 um, at least two to one. There you go, Rain did say it had an oil service not long before being parked here and that oil looks rather good so maybe we if we can get i don't know if this is the correct key for the ignition the ignition has been vandalized it's been they've tried to tamper with it and, and maybe hot 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 start it so hot wire it but we'll see we might be able to get it to turn over bless it it certainly can't live here any longer I've been, uh, I've been marinating the, um, the bonnet release in WD-40, and I think... Ah, right, okay. Bingo. Oh my gosh, look at it. Well, there's a spare race wheel, and there's some weeds growing. Hello, weed. How long have you been here? Oh my gosh. Look at the weeds root. Look at the weeds root. Well, that saved me a job because the first thing I'll do is check the gutters. And actually those gutters, I mean, the fact that it's just sat here in such horrible circumstances, it doesn't look, that doesn't look too bad. There's moisture in there, driver's side where the, where the window was smashed for sure. But this is where the battery goes. So if, if I'm if I'm if I'm convinced that the if that key is right for the ignition, we've got a chance of being able to put a battery on it, um, spin it over, and see. But I'm not promising anything. I think I've uncovered the 912 as much as I possibly can. We're convinced that the key that Ren's got is not the right key for this car. And although we took the barrel apart, the ignition barrel, I wasn't convinced it was right. And I don't want to hotwire it because. All the carb linkages are sea solid, so I've sprayed them all down with, with penetrating oil, but I, I don't think we'll be able to get this car to fire up, and I don't want to risk going any further with that. But we've, we've, we've had a look under the bonnet, we've had a look under the boot. Yes, it's rotten in numerous places, but it's an early 912 in a back garden in Wales, and the complexity is this that you can see here. To get these cars out, you've got to move everything a collapsed garage, fire damaged cars, trees, stuff. <laughs> but this is an incredible, incredible car. It's just very sad, I think, that it's been left here. Hi. Hi. 
Look. Oh my gosh. The only deltas you ever see nowadays in this country anyway are HF turbos and integrales. They're the, they're the hot ones, you know, the HF turbo, um, 1.6 litre, integrale 2 litre. But this little 1.3, which has had a plastic piece of roofing over it, which might have actually protected it. Although the roof is moving as I lift the tailgate. So Rain decided that we pop over to his house to look at his other Porsche. Well, you've got like, I don't know how many Porsches you've got. Four? Four? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this one's a 911. And, oh, I feel so sorry for it. 66. So it's another early one. It's beautiful. Tell me the story behind this one. Um, an Italian market car that went into, probably a serviceman bought it, then it went to New York for 30 odd years and then it came to me and then I drove around in it for a little while and um, <clears throat> it's a solid roof car, tinted window, 5 speed, early dash but it's got the 2.2 911S engine and it was uprated in New York by the owner who owned it for 30 years. Yeah. It's got stiffened suspension, the brakes are upgraded. So when did you stop using this? Uh, it's got the tax disc in the window. 2000. Oh, no, no, two, 2006. Oh, six. I was using it on the road. Then it went to the specialist and it was there for three or four years. It was always, I'm going to do it tomorrow, do it next week. Three soon. or four years? Yeah. And, okay. then it, then, and then we found out from Gareth that he, he was done for murder. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, <laughs> True. He, he went over from these cars to BMW motorbikes and then he, then he brought the car back, you know. He said, okay. he said, no bill, no bill. So you've got, I've noticed in the front garden, I've noticed there's a Mark II Golf that's sort of part of the hedge now. I do love a Mark II. You've got your, your, your gates and then you've got a, beer, um, a Mercedes C -class. Mercedes two, C200, two litre, 16 valve, five speed manual, which is very rare, okay. 23,000 miles from new. So how many Porsches have you owned? You obviously like your Porsches. Yeah. You like your Mercedes, yeah. BMWs. Yeah, I had a lot of Heelys and I did sprints and I didn't do any rallies in them, but they were all rally spec, you know. So, okay, yeah. you're always interested in, in road rallies and stuff. Uh, road rally, stage rallies, but the, the, I used the, <coughs> in rallying I had a Lotus Cortina, and when you get one of those, you learn how to be a mechanic, because it's so unreliable. Yeah. But I did 13 or, I think 13 rallies, road rallies, motoring news. Yeah. Then I went on to Volvo 544, 120 Amazon and 142 and, and I did internationals with those. Oh, nice. Volvo, and then, yeah. then went to Group 1 Forenza. Yeah. Uh, Vauxhall Blue One and did the Welsh on that and uh, rally in France and international in France. So you've done a lot of rally. And then I got uh, X-Works HS Chevette, but unfortunately um, I never got to rally it. It used to belong to Jerry Marshall. Really? Uh, Ex-Jerry Marshall? Yeah. But wow. it was a very, very, very early one very very early one of the first ones they made as a hs so a bit of an experimental one uh, but i never rallied it it was done for tarmac suspension yeah and, and geared for tarmac rallying uh, but I, I never got to use it then i got married in 1980 otherwise i would have sort of continued 81 done another inter perhaps use that car you know yeah but yeah then um it, it's things go you know got married at midnight in las vegas did you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to work well, it. My wife could... was from America, ex, ex CIA, you know. Was she? Yeah. Narcotics entrapment. Wow. And so we had a wild five years and then a very sad five years because um, she, she ended up with a fourth type of cancer. It's two, two when we were together and then the third one in Long Beach where she came from and she died in 1990 for cancer. But oh, then bless. we had, my, had all my family, my parents, my uncle, they all died. Then her family all died in, from Bremerhaven in Germany. I know I'm stood on the bonnet of the 924 Turbo, um, but 
the reality is there isn't any way to get over here, but you can tell it's a 924 because turbo. The NACA duct on the left hand side of the bonnet and these extra grills here. I am physically digging it out with, with an old stick. It doesn't get more lo-fi <laughs> than that. But I do like the fact that I've had this opportunity to come in and legitimately meet the owner. And these cars are all going to be sold. They've all got to go. Not for free, because I would have already had the 912, but yeah, they're all going to be sold. They all need new homes. Whether or not they're all restorable, I don't know. I've just spent 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just clearing this part of what is a Fiat 124 Spider US import car. Um, there's an enormous amount of brick piles, car parts and hedging to, to even act is in such a tight spot in the corner here, I think it would take me half a day to probably access this. But yeah, this is a Fiat 124 Spider driven in here, um, imported from the States. Twin cam, like most of them were, most of them ended up going to the States. The, the, the production period lasted years. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to prove to you that, it's, that it is another car that is inside this <sighs> Cardon. It is a Cardon, isn't it? This It's a Cardon of cars. Yeah, sad though. Well, we've uh, we've uncovered as much as we possibly can in the con confines of the, the space. And um, I want to say a big thank you to, to Gareth and to Rain for letting me come and have a look at these cars. All of these cars are for sale. They all have to go, but don't contact me. I will put some contact details in the description so you can contact Rain directly and negotiate whether or not you want to buy the, the cars. But as you can see, it's quite a difficult site to get cars out. You've got to extract everything through here. So there's going to involve demolition and all sorts. But there's some beautiful cars, interestingly spec cars that deserve a, another shot at life. Uh, I want to say thank you to Adrian Flux Insurance for supporting these uh, barn find features. Obviously, this is not a barn. <laughs> That's why I'm holding a, a hedge trimmer and <laughs> got gardening gloves on. Um, and yeah, if you have a vehicle like this or you know of a car in a shed, in a garden that you think might be of interest, please get in contact with the show. Thank you.